So a few years back, it was my wife's birthday, and we were planning to get away. And I'm not allowed to tell you which birthday it was, but it was an important one. I know this because she told me so. <laughs> now, we called the Hotel Indigo in Asheville a few months ahead of time, and they have this beautiful view of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So when I was booking the reservation, I said, hey, can we have a mountain view? We want to celebrate my wife's birthday. That was it. I didn't make a big deal about it. I just left it there. So a few months later, we show up at the hotel, and we're early. So we have to sit there. The room is not ready. We wait, and we wait, and we wait. And I realize that my wife is getting, how shall we say, homicidal. <laughs> And I also realized that this weekend is becoming memorable for the wrong reasons. So I, like a dutiful spouse, I go up to the desk and I talk to the young lady. And, and with all the self-control you wish your customers had, I explain to her that, hey, we've been sitting here for 45 minutes. It's 30 minutes past checkout. And golly gee, Wally, wouldn't it be great if we could get in our room? And she does this thing. She doesn't even say a word to me. She starts doing this. And you know how it is when somebody you're talking to is doing that, you start doing that. And of course I realize I don't know what I'm looking for. So she looks back at me and it was, apparently she was looking for my wife because she goes, Mr. Tepork, yes, your room's been ready. Been ready. Come again? Well, we've got you a beautiful room on the ninth floor. It's overlooking the mountains, but the concierge is out getting a present for your wife's birthday. And, you know, my memory's not what it used to be, but I'm racking my brain. I'm like, we haven't mentioned her birthday since we, two months ago. Two months ago is when we mentioned it. Wow. So I thanked the young lady, and I started to walk back to my wife, but then I realized that I have a problem. You see, I now have a secret. And as far as my wife is concerned, my sole purpose on this earth in this particular moment in space time is to go report back to her the very thing that is now a secret. <laughs> so I do the only thing I can think to do in the situation. Dad, hey, yeah, yeah, we just got to Asheville. No, 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 we've been hanging out in the lobby. We're waiting. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, yo, weather's, weather's beautiful. And that's how an otherwise sane person has an imaginary conversation with his father <laughs> for 32 minutes. <laughs> now, the room was ready, and it wasn't 32 minutes. And as we're going up, I realize I don't know what to expect. I don't know what they've done. But when we walk in the room, this is what we saw. They'd done it all. The champagne on ice, the glasses, the letters that spell out happy birthday. And I was amazed, and my wife, she was floored. And, you know, she sat there, her just being flooded with emotions of wonder and surprise, and that feeling when somebody does something really thoughtful for you. All I could think was, I can't believe they gave us a queen. <laughs> the thing is, she really was touched, and I watched her in her eyes, she was getting all misty-eyed, and I realized what they had done. What they had done was they'd taken an ordinary experience an ordinary moment and made it extraordinary. They'd created an emotional connection, an emotional moment, and a memory that's lasted for this many years. How can we create moments like these with our customers? How can we make the ordinary extraordinary? How can we as leaders show our teams how to create these moments with customers? Because this was an experience facilitated by leadership. Do you think a hotel employee documents a birthday in a reservation, and then two months later, another hotel employee uses that information to delight a customer without training? Do you think a hotel concierge leaves their post, leaves the building to go shopping for a customer without being empowered by management to do so? You know, in my career in retail and franchising, my focus has always been on real world application. When I speak to frontline teams, when I consult with executives, my focus is on the strategies and techniques that work when you don't have enough budget, when you don't have enough staff, when you don't have enough time. Does that world sound familiar to any of you? Right, because it's the world we all live in. But I'll tell you something, and this is not something you're gonna hear from people who speak on stages that often. There's a customer experience principle I want you to think about as we spend this next 40 or so minutes together, and it's this. Stories like the one I just told you do not scale. 
The hotel cannot do that for every customer. They simply can't. Stories do not scale, but they do instruct. You see, customer experience is not about creating impressive stories, though it's nice when we do. Customer experience is about creating meaningful connections. Customer experience is not about the momentous, it's about the moments. It's not about the momentous, it's about the moments. How can we make an emotional connection with our customers? How can we take the slightest interactions and make them resonate? And how can we make every experience a hero class experience? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're going to talk about today. How we, as leaders, can support our teams so that they can deliver meaningful moments to our customers.